there, my fellow Myth and Fantasy nerds. My name is Tanner, and I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. So, it is still quite warm and quite humid where I'm at, hence why I'm wearing a tank top. Not to mention that it makes my arms look good. Anyway, for this week's video, I wanted to tell you guys one of my absolute favorite fairy tales. Now, this story is one of the ones that technically both Disney and 20th Century Fox have adapted, although the Disney adaptation is also mixed with another similar tale. However, like with all my myth, legend, and fairy tale retellings, link to the playlist up in the cards and in the description down below, I will be keeping this story as close to the original story as possible while taking some creative liberties when and where necessary. Also remember, a good story has many retellings and variations, and this is merely one of them. So as always, please make sure to leave a like on this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe down below. Pretty please! It'll help me make more content for you. And without further ado, here is the story of Thumbelina. Roll film! Once upon a time, in a small village near the edge of the woods, there lived an older woman. The woman was a widow her husband having passed away long before this story took place, and her children had all grown up and had their own families to take care of, so they couldn't visit very often. As such, the woman was rather lonely indeed. One morning, as she was running errands in the village, she happened to bump into Mother Ivy, the village herbalist, who was collecting ingredients for her potions, poultices, and other natural remedies for whatever ails you. Good day, my dearie, Mother Ivy said. Good day, Mother Ivy, came the reply. Why, my dear, why so gloomy today? Oh, it's just lonely, living in that house by myself. As you know, I have no husband, and my children hardly ever visit me. I just wish I had someone to keep me company, that's all. At this, Mother Ivy's face broke into a wide grin, and she took the widow's hand and said, I have just the thing for you! Come, come! Mother Ivy took the widow to her cottage, and from atop one of her shelves, she pulled off a small pouch reached inside and placed four small barley seeds into the widow's hand. These may look like ordinary barley corns, but that could not be further from the truth. These barley corns will grant you your heart's desire. Just don't eat them, or plant them in the field, but put them in a pot of soil by themselves. The widow, perplexed, said to Mother Ivy, Thank you so much, but I don't have much to pay for these with. Oh, think nothing of it, my dear, Mother Ivy replied. Think of it as a gift. We older women need to stick by each other, am I right? The widow, grateful but still bemused, said thank you to Mother Ivy and did as she instructed, planting the barley corns in a small pot of soil and setting it in the window. After a few days, the widow saw there was, in fact, a small plant growing in the pot. As it was the only other living thing in the house, she would talk to it as if itself were a pet or a human child. As she talked to the plant, it seemed as though the plant would respond, growing taller as quick as ever. Soon enough, the widow noticed a flower, almost tulip-like in appearance, growing out of the pot. Oh my, your very first flower, she said to the plant. How exciting! I can't wait to see you bloom and blossom for the first time. That day came a lot sooner than she expected. 
As the flower bloomed, the woman was astounded to see right there inside the flower, there stood a tiny little girl who couldn't be bigger than the widow's thumb. Hello, mother, the young girl said. Goodness me, the widow said. What is your name, child? I don't know, came the reply. I suppose I don't have one. Will you give me a name? The widow was touched that the little girl would ask her for a name. She thought about it, taking in the little girl's height, until the perfect name came to her. Thumbelina, the woman said. Your name is Thumbelina. The little girl smiled at her new name, and the widow treated her like her own daughter, sewing little dresses for her out of scraps of fabric and pieces of thread. The little girl also accompanied the widow on her errands in the village, riding comfortably in the widow's apron pocket. At night, the widow would read Thumbelina stories just like she did when her other children were young. And just as they would then, those stories would send Thumbelina off to dreamland. Unfortunately, as with most stories, these times certainly couldn't last forever. Thumbelina and the widow were out doing errands one day when the little girl unknowingly caught the eye of a very ugly toad. This toad was actually looking for someone that definitely fit Thumbelina's description. So one night, while Thumbelina was sleeping, the toad snuck into the house and took the jewelry box that Thumbelina used as a bed with Thumbelina still asleep inside. Oh, son, the toad cried out as she brought the music box to the edge of a stream where many other frogs, toads, and salamanders lived. I found her. I found you a wife. The toad's son, who was just as ugly as his mother, if not uglier, said to her, Ma, what in the swamp are you talking about? Come here and see for yourself, came the reply. She's the prettiest little creature you ever did see, and I just know you two will make the most adorable pollywogs this side of the riverbed. Mama Toad set the jewelry box down, and when her son looked in and saw Thumbelina, his eyes grew wider than usual, and he instantly fell in love with her. Without giving it a second thought, the toad's son leaned down to give the sleeping girl a kiss. Well, you can imagine the shock and disgust Thumbelina felt when she was rudely awakened by a wet, slimy kiss, as well as the horror and confusion when she realized she wasn't in the widow's house anymore. Where am I? she asked. Who are you? I demand to be taken back to my mother this instant! Oh, come, come, my pretty, Mama Toad said. You don't need to live with that human anymore. You should be here with creatures your own size. Just because I'm the same size doesn't make me a toad. Then just what are you? The toad's son asked. This question made Thumbelina pause. She couldn't answer because she really didn't know herself. Right. No more nonsense, Mama Toad said. I got things to do before the wedding. And just to make sure our blushing bride doesn't try to run off. Mama Toad placed Thumbelina on a lily pad floating in the river. It was just far enough from the shore that Thumbelina couldn't jump across, and the river was flowing way too fast for Thumbelina to swim to safety. So she was truly and completely trapped. When Mama Toad and her son left, Thumbelina sat down and started to sob. She really didn't want to spend the rest of her days being an ugly Toad's wife, but there was really nothing she could do to stop it. Just then, two fish swam by, heard Thumbelina's crying and asked what was going on. When Thumbelina told them the story, they took pity on her and chewed through the lily pad's stalk until Thumbelina was free. 
Thumbelina's lily pad floated down the river peacefully before the toads even knew she had gone. Thumbelina wasn't out of danger yet, though. The lily pad floated faster and faster as the river picked up speed, and the little girl saw the river flowing into a waterfall. Thumbelina began to panic, as what might have seemed like a small drop to us may very well have been Niagara Falls to someone the size of a thumb. Help! she screamed. Somebody help me, please! Luckily for her, a large beetle was flying by at that very moment and heard her cries. He took pity on what he thought was a strange-looking insect, so he swooped down and plucked her off the lily pad just before it reached the waterfall. The beetle flew Thumbelina over to the tree where all the other insects lived. Bumblebees, butterflies, mantids, ladybugs, spiders, ants, dragonflies, and many other insects came over to see this strange insect the beetle brought to them. Thumbelina turned to the beetle and thanked him for rescuing her. Just what kind of insect are you, my dear? a ladybug asked. I see no wings, nor do I see antennae, remarked a dragonfly. She seems to have only two eyes and four legs, said a bumblebee. I'm not an insect, Thumbelina said, confused. Then what are you? asked the spider. Once again, Thumbelina couldn't answer, because she didn't know herself. I'm sorry, the beetle said, picking her back up. Our tree is strictly insects only. He carried her back down the tree and set her down on the ground. Thumbelina looked around, hoping to find some way back to the widow's house. But she wasn't even sure where she was. Nothing seemed familiar. Thumbelina walked and walked and walked, through the grass, through the flowers, through the trees hoping to eventually make her way back home. Unfortunately, she wandered for so long, the seasons changed all around her. Autumn was an especially dangerous time for her, and she had to keep a watchful eye on the trees as they shed their leaves. When she came across a fallen leaf, she wrapped it around herself to try and keep herself warm. As she walked, she came across a bird with beautiful blue plumage. He was lying on the ground, shivering, though from the cold or from pain, Thumbelina couldn't be sure. You poor thing, Thumbelina said, taking pity on the bird. Whatever happened to you? The bird lifted his head and said to her, I broke my wing and I can't fly south for the winter. I will surely freeze to death before too long. I understand what it feels like to be separated from your family, Thumbelina said sympathetically. Don't worry, I'll stay with you until you're well again. Using a blade of grass and a small twig, Thumbelina fashioned a splint over the bird's broken wing and covered him in a layer of leaves to keep him warm. She nursed the poor bird back to health and stayed by his side until his wing felt good enough to fly with. Thank you so much, little one, the bird said to her. You are the kindest. What exactly are you again? Thumbelina still didn't know the answer to this, so she quickly changed the subject. You should probably hurry, otherwise you'll never make it south before winter. The bird thanked her again and flew off. Thumbelina kept walking until she eventually had to look towards the sky again, this time not for falling leaves, but for falling snowflakes. The winter wind ripped at the leaf that she used for warmth and protection, and she was afraid that if she didn't find shelter soon, she would never survive until the spring. Just as she was about to give up hope, she came across a small door. Hoping to ask for shelter, she knocked. Yes? The door opened, revealing a kindly-looking mouse. Please, Thumbelina shivered. May I come inside and get warm? 
it's so cold and I have nowhere else t to go. Oh, you poor wee thing, the mouse said. Of course you may come in. Please sit yourself by the fire and I'll fix you a hot cup of tea. Thumbelina lived with the mouse through the bitterest times of the winter season, earning her keep by helping the mouse keep her home neat and tidy. During the harsh winter, the mouse and Thumbelina quickly became the best of friends, and the mouse especially enjoyed the stories that Thumbelina told her before bed, just as the widow told them to her before that. The mouse could see that Thumbelina truly missed the widow, but seeing as how dubious it was that they would ever be reunited, the mouse came up with another idea. That evening, the mouse invited her neighbor, the mole, over for dinner. He was an older, curmudgeonly sort, and he pretty much talked about nothing else except for how much he hated the sunlight. Thumbelina, being the polite soul she was, listened to the mole's complaining, though she secretly couldn't disagree more. It seemed as though the mole had become quite smitten with her, and as she was clearing the dishes, Thumbelina heard the mole whispering to the mouse when they thought she was out of earshot. Later that night, when the mole had left, Thumbelina asked the mouse what they were whispering about. The mole has fallen in love with you, deity, the mouse said, smiling. He wishes to marry you. Thumbelina frowned at this notion. Well, that's very nice of him to say, she said, but I cannot marry him. But why ever not, the mouse replied. He lives in a hole much larger than this, with plenty of rooms for you and your future children. You can help him with his loneliness just as much as he can help you with yours. Don't get me wrong, Thumbelina said. He seems like a nice gentleman, but I fear I may miss the sunlight too much to ever be happy living with him. Besides, I'm not a mole. Then what exactly are you? The mouse replied. I'm not sure, Thumbelina replied, but I love the sunlight too much to ever be a mole. The mouse, loving the sunlight herself, understood. And she said to Thumbelina, Well, you're in luck. It seems as though winter is over and spring has arrived. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thumbelina hugged her friend and made her way back into the sunlight. As she walked away from the mouse's door out into a lovely spring day, a large shadow swooped over her and she looked up to see a very familiar face flying overhead. Thumbelina, the bird said, landing beside her. I found it! I found your home as I was flying past! Thumbelina's heart leapt. Will you please take me home then? I really miss my mother, and I would love to see her again. As an answer, the bird lowered himself to the ground and allowed Thumbelina to climb on his back. She waved goodbye to the mouse, and the bird took off, flying back the way he came. They flew south for what seemed like forever. Thumbelina hadn't known she had traveled so far away. Soon enough, the bird flew over, not the widow's house, but a large meadow filled with wildflowers. Welcome home, Thumbelina, the bird sang excitedly. As Thumbelina looked, to her utter astonishment, she saw amongst the flowers there was nestled a kingdom with buildings the size of birdhouses. As she looked further, she saw the kingdom's inhabitants, men, women, children, all the exact same size as her. The only thing that separated her from them was they all had large, insect-like wings on their backs. My dear bird, where have you taken me? Thumbelina asked politely. Don't you recognize this place? The bird replied. I thought for sure this was where you came from. He landed near the village, and Thumbelina climbed down from his back. As she moved near the kingdom, a young man, wearing a crown woven from daisy petals, 
wings folded against his back, approached them. Ho there, strangers, he said politely. What may we help you with? Thumbelina looked at the man and replied, Please, sir, I believe I'm lost. Can you please tell me exactly where I am? The young man smiled and said, Why, this is the kingdom of the fairies. Thumbelina looked at him, and for the first time in her life, things started to make sense. So does that mean I'm a fairy? What do you mean? the young man asked. Didn't you know? Thumbelina explained her whole life up to this point. How she lived with the widow for many years, was kidnapped by a toad, rescued by fish, then by a beetle, who then rejected her, then lived with a mouse for the entire winter, and was now here. The man, who introduced himself as the prince of the fairies, was enraptured by the story she told. He immediately decided to give her a tour of the kingdom. Well, wait, Thumbelina said suddenly. If I'm a fairy, then why don't I have wings like the rest of the kingdom? The prince smiled and said, Because wings are not something a fairy is born with. They're something you earn. And after all the harrowing adventures you've had up to this point, you definitely deserve a pair all your own. The prince snapped his fingers and immediately a beautiful pair of wings sprung from Thumbelina's back. The prince took her hand and immediately started to teach her how to fly. Eventually, the prince and Thumbelina fell in love with each other, and soon the prince asked Thumbelina to be his bride. Of course, she said yes, and became the fairy princess. Now you might be thinking, but... What happened to the poor widow? Well, despite finally being among her own kind, Thumbelina didn't really feel at home without the widow who raised her like a daughter. So Thumbelina and her prince invited the widow to stay and live with the fairies. Of course, the widow couldn't pass up such an opportunity, so she moved closer to the meadow where the fairy kingdom was, and she and Thumbelina lived happily ever after. And there we have it. That was the story of Thumbelina. Wasn't that a beautiful story? If you liked this video and you want more, please consider leaving a like and subscribing down below so you don't miss any new content from me. Also, if you have any other ideas you want to see in any future videos, please leave your suggestions in the comments down below. Who knows? It might just happen. Alright. Well, that's all the time I have for this video, so I'll see you all next week with some brand new content for ya. See you guys then.